Okay, here is my fish room. I call it my fish room. I know everybody's got their big old fish rooms, and as you're gonna see this is quite small by standards, quite compact. Uh, it's what I do in the winter time. Normally I mount in the garden. In the winter, uh, this is it. This is my nice angel tank. Got nine koi angels in here. And we got six zebra and yo-yo loaches. Some of them are yo-yos, some of them are zebras. Pet smart sells those and they mislabel all of them uh, zebra loaches with gold zebra loaches but uh, a lot of times they're just mixed in with yo-yos or they're all yo-yos so my koi they all get along great together they've been grown up together a bunch of them uh, actually have made it off a couple times and laid eggs but they get eaten up right away Tank, community tank like this. This Nerite right here. She, I'm going to call her she since she lays these eggs here a lot. Which never grow, but we need brackish water for that. But the, uh, she stays on this uh, piece of Mopani wood uh, all the time. And I know that looks like that zebra loach is flashing, but. <laughs> Well, that actually is a yo-yo right there. Uh, he does that all the time. It just uh, doesn't have gill flukes, doesn't have ick, just likes to flash. And he's been doing that for the past six months. And they're actually pretty old. I only feed my fish once a day, and I usually don't feed them one day every, at least once a week. They don't grow real fast. Uh, and I like it that way. I don't have to keep up with moving them out and stuff when the angels get too big they just won't get quite as big a size when you do that but that's okay with me they still uh, very happy here together um, got several of them through the mail so uh, several of the koi loaches through the mail and they got the red a little bit burnt gills you can see the red coloration on a few of them that never have faded much it's <clears throat> from the, they get that from the uh, being in that uh, shipping containers, but they're all healthy. Most of them are uh, at least been in here at least three, four months. And there's uh, Mr. Billy the Beta. He's kind of the king of the tank. Uh, nobody bothers him. He just goes about his business, goes all over. I think they're all afraid of him because he's black. And he's so much different than all the rest of them. And there's my, what a lot of people consider feeder fish, the uh, rosy reds. I think rosy reds make great fish. They are very intelligent. Uh, it's a shame that they're in this uh, industry as a feeder fish when they're so intelligent and so uh, great just great fish they just don't they don't bother anybody else they really playful they smart uh, this is about how big they get they don't get much bigger than this these guys are full grown this is my main 40 gallon tank here Don't do many water changes around, and I rarely ever do a water change. I know that's big in the industry to water change, water change, or water change, but I got a lot of plants growing here, and I just throw the plants out when they get uh, too overgrown. I just cleared them out recently, and that pretty much takes care of most of the water parameters, and don't have issues. I've gone years a lot of times without 
changing water in some of these tanks. Uh, about once a month I put each tank on a canister filter and run it through for one day each and then it cleans it up real good and get rid of all the excess muck. So that's about two gallons of uh, water that get changed about once a month on these tanks. Now, I don't recommend that to anybody. Uh, I do use a lot of prime. Uh, actually I buy the, the powder version safe of it. Moving on, I'd like to show my second 40 down here. And this is my was just koi. All I had in here originally was just these three koi. I just overwinter them before they're going to go out in the pond. I bought them as babies this year and I always do that. I get a few of them, keep them over the winter and then stick them out in the pond. I got a lot of ponds outdoors but uh, ended up rehoming uh, 14 of these uh, uh, what they call the uh, uh, I think they're brown quarries. They call them browns, or but they got the real effervescent green stripe on them. So they're, and I think these are kind of like a hybrid of somebody's breeding. But they brought in their 14 babies that they had grown up. And they're really happy here. They're all waiting to be fed. They know I'm in here. It's uh, they know when I'm in here that I'm most likely going to be feeding them so everybody's kind of excited here like, there's also a Procosmus in here uh, an albino, he's about 5 inches long and there's uh, a Pickus catfish there he owns that uh, Mopani wood there, he's underneath of there and he don't let anybody go underneath there he chases a mouse, if it's a big koi he don't bother them but, but uh, this koi here has just got gorgeous colors on them. I'm actually going to hate to put them out in the pond. He looks so good in just the tank. But these are my two tanks here with my homemade. And moving right along, as you can tell, this is a greenhouse. This is a uh, Harbor Freight 6x8 foot greenhouse makes a great little greenhouse. I've done some stuff to stiffen it up and this actually survived a tornado hit. Uh, an EF0 tornado hit uh, right in this backyard and went right over this thing, bent a bunch of metal and, and downed a heck of a lot of tree parts and stuff and uh, threw stuff all around but this little greenhouse hit didn't budge an inch. Braces. I had to move this brace so I could put these uh, uh, tanks in here. I had to move this one, but if you put these braces in the corners, just four, I've got four metal braces and one in each corner. Here you're looking at that stretch across from this to over this thing here. And I've done that at each one of these. And you just do that and it just strengthens. 20 gallon long and here this is this is actually my uh, quarantine tank right here and right now I have three birchers in there and uh, bikers birchers whatever people want to call them uh, I also have a uh, red tail shark and uh, another uh, betta well, his name is Rudy Ruby he's red quite red and they're all getting along just fine. They've been in there for a couple weeks now. Uh, most of the birchers have actually had some of them about two months. So I'm getting ready to, as soon as uh, spring gets here, and I'm going to build a little different environment in here. I'm going to add, uh, uh, a, I'll give you an overview of this whole thing here. I have this big tank down here, this 110 gallon tank that. House is a turtle, and this is something I came up with myself. This DIY great little trick here you can do. You buy this piece here. It's a Husky-made 
environment uh, down there at Home Depot for about 20 bucks and you put it on a tank uh, across the side of the tank like that you just want to get one of these big uh, Rubbermaid or uh, yeah I forget the name of the other one uh, and I believe this is this isn't actually a Rubbermaid tank but this is the other one brand that got at Rural King and uh, they're really nice well actually I think I got this one at, at uh, farm and home store so that's another great place to pick up stuff like that and there's some plants I'm overwintering in here also so everything gets a little crowded in here but got these tanks here these are full of guppies there's a lot of guppies in all these tanks uh, got these tanks over here all of these tanks are all guppy tanks Except for this, needs a little bit of cleaning here, but this is my mud skipper tank. Uh, that's Buddy right there. Had Buddy for about six months now, and there's another one in there called Muddy. He's a little bit smaller, so Buddy's kind of rules the tank, but he don't pick on them there. He chases them away every now and then, but they each got their own side of the tank, and these guys are absolute pigs they eat more food you can't they fill up <laughs> i think their butt, uh, gut would bust if you just kept filling them they're they're just pigs kind of got a lot of algae growing in that tank that's a brackish water tank actually uh, so i'm actually going to put some knee rights in there and let them maybe even breed in there since they like brackish i'll put a couple bigger ones in there so that they don't uh, Muddy and Buddy don't uh, eat him, but uh, you know he's waiting. He says, "Oh, you're gonna feed me, huh?" Yep, he's looking there. He says, "Yep." When, when are you gonna eat? I'll give you a good close-up of Buddy. These guys grew up together in a tank. Um, they were the pet store had them, Petland had them for sale for. The guy said they were there for six months. Nobody bought them, so they put them on clearance for. 10 bucks a piece and I actually uh, bought uh, Buddy first here but the when he caught him he got underneath the uh, system there at Petland and disappeared he escaped out of the thing and so it's like okay well I'll take the other one then we spent about a half an hour looking for him flashlights trying to find him underneath and so I figured he would just die under there and I took his cohort there uh, Muddy and uh, I came back about a week later and there was Buddy sitting in the tank again. The guy said, yeah, about an hour later he came out from underneath the uh, systems they got there and he put them back in the tank. So I ended up with putting them back together since they had lived their whole life together. And uh, they do great actually together. They're, you know, that, these are the African varieties. They're, they got that real blue to them if he was if my tank was a little cleaner and he cleaned that up and they were showing more but uh they don't seem to grow they're not nearly as big as they're supposed to get but that's okay um, they're real happy and real friendly and real responsive to anything you do and these are some of my guppy tanks in here and there's another guppy tank right here uh, working on some plants and stuff I just got in but basically uh, I know this looks a little cramped and a little not the greatest in the world but it's my world and I really like it it cost me about this is Missouri here and tonight's supposed to get down to zero yet it's a nice toasty I only got one heater and actually one tank and that's this one right here and all the rest of these tanks are just heated by the temperature of the thing and right now uh, this heater hasn't been on so it's 76 or so degrees in, in here right now in the greenhouse and then right now it's probably about 20 outside but it's going to get down to zero and it only costs like 15 bucks to heat this thing uh, keep it going I've got I don't use regular heaters I use these right here and I'm, I just got this one moved out of the way right now these ceramic heaters I got three of them here they're 100 watt each and I don't really turn them on all the way every time uh, I just kind of uh, keep them at about 75 percent and that way they last a lot longer even though they're gonna last years and years but just to keep the the bill down here and but in Missouri the uh, 
rates here are pretty low in the winter for the electrical rates drop down to about six cents a kilowatt hour so uh, it, it really don't cost that much to heat this thing or light this thing most of these lights are on uh, timers and they're only on for about eight hours a day but as you can see even with the eight hours since this is the south facing way which I'm pointing right here the sun comes in there uh, real good during midday it just pours in there and just really cooks this thing in here I mean it can get up to 90 degrees easily in here um, other than that I've got all the styrofoam all over the roofs I've got um, actually the plex uh, you see all the uh, um, acrylic or poly whatever it's called uh, that these are made out of I've got this actually double walled on the outside I've got another I went out and bought some more and put it on the outside of that so and then there's the between it you see there there's an inch thick uh, foam out there so between those foams and these are double here that have like a, a spacing of an inch underneath of them and there are more than an inch thick and I've almost got these totally covered I've been working to get this done to get more of it covered as I collect these pieces here of foam but uh, eventually this is going to be about R30 or greater with all the stuff I have in here and outside so uh, it's getting quite cheap uh, cheaper by the the month to actually keep this thing warm so and keep all these fish happy but I'll keep you guys updated I'm going to create a whole new system over here along this wall and these guys will buddy and muddy will move to a, a new 20 gallon long here and I'm just gonna put a, a rack system in here and have a couple 29 gallons and a 20 gallon long on a rack along here above these tanks here and move this big tank over it can be moved over another several feet over to the two feet over to the left there which allowed me to take the rack all the way to the end of the wall down there that's a summer project it's just not warm enough to do that kind of thing right now around here and um, keeping this thing cool during the, to the spring I'm going to be putting in a new uh, I'll show you guys updates along the way of that. I'll be putting in a new system of ground cooling system that uh, with piping that runs underneath the ground about I'm put about four feet down about uh, 50 feet of it and just pump the air from here down there. I was either going to try that or I was going to try one of those wet systems where the water drips by. Uh, can't think of the name right off hand which you call them but uh, I was going to either try that or the ground one. I think I'll try go with the ground one because I could, that, that seems more logical to me for this kind of system here. And then I won't have nothing. It's cheaper to do in the long run. Not paying for water and just paying for a fan and air. And it doesn't really take a lot to cool this thing down. I had this going all summer. Uh, when it's 100 degrees outside I can keep these tanks in the upper at, at most the low 80s so I, everybody survives through the summer so I haven't really had a problem but I just want to make it even easier so there's my uh, there's rubies coming out now and there's some of the birchers swimming around back there they're just little guys right now and I'll be moving them to bigger tanks as they get bigger I moved them to one of the 29 gallons right in this spring. But they're real happy and they're pigs too. You can see they're at their bellies are full. They're one of my favorite fish. But I said uh Hope you all enjoyed this. Thanks.